third session. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chandramani, would you please uh, introduce yourself or, uh, let me, or let me do that uh, for you? Go ahead. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chandramani Srivastava is in charge of uh, the Geology Department of, for SLB's Well Construction Division and works at uh, the company's headquarters in Sugarland, United States. He has a master's degree in applied geology from uh, IIT Rook in India and has a master's in petroleum engineering from uh, Harriet Watt University. He has worked in various technical roles in India, the Middle East, South Southeast Asia, West Africa, and the UN, United States, of course. Over the course of his uh, more than 20 years of service, he has presented and published over 80, 80 papers at numerous uh, symposia and conferences. His, his expertise includes interpreting well logs and integrating data. Let's start, sir, with this session. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the uh, University of uh, Bumadev uh, to host me and uh, to give this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, I'm going to talk about the fracture challenge. Uh, it's, uh, I would like it to be a very interactive session uh, because uh, you know, you are, most of you, I believe, are students and uh, we believe in uh, having a session where you ask as many questions as you can. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, let me know if you can uh, see what I'm presenting. Can you see the presentation or not? It is loading for now. It is perfectly fine. We can uh, see it. Okay. Thank you. So I am uh, one of the distinguished lecturer for this season for SPE. And, uh, you know, the primary funding comes from SPE Foundation through members donation and uh, contribution from Offshore Europe. And the society is grateful to all those companies that allow their professionals to serve as lecturers. Additional support uh, is provided by AIME. And as I said earlier, I'm thankful to University of Pumardev to uh, host me for this talk. So please let me know if uh, everything is fine at your end. Uh, and then I can start my, my little talk. OK. So uh, fractures are very important. We all hear about them all the time. And uh, you know there are ways to know about them. However, when it comes to understand the fractures, while we are drilling a well itself, uh, there is not much uh, in, into the public domain in terms of published papers, et cetera. So uh, we will try to see what we can learn and what we can apply with the measurements or uh, with the technologies that we have available to know about the fractures and why fractures are important for that matter. So quickly, the outline is uh, we will talk about uh, the definition of fracture, which is uh, not something uh, a lot of people agree with. But uh, then we'll talk about their characterization while drilling and uh, the evol evolution of technologies associated, limitation, and uh, some opportunities. So uh, if we come to uh, definition of fractures, there are a lot of uh, definitions that geologists uh, come up with. However, we don't want to get into that debate. So we will talk about them uh, from a perspective of, uh, should I say, mechanical engineer. Uh, that fractures are cracked along which cohesion of material is lost. Now, fractures, by this definition, could be big faults or they could be just uh, very small, uh, you know, joint or uh, veins. They could be anything. They, call, they all can fall under the purview of fractures. If I follow the definition that uh, fractures are cracked along which cohesion of material is lost. Now, there are two types of fractures if we talk about them. Uh, 
they are naturally occurring one. And there is something else I call uh, anthropogenic. That is uh, the fractures created by humans. And what are those fractures created by humans? They are of two types. Again, drilling induced. While you are drilling, you are inducing some fractures. And then uh, when you are stimulating, uh, if you're doing a frac job to uh, get something out of the tight reservoirs, that is also something that humans have uh, done. So it is also one sort of anthropogenic fracture and uh, the stimulation induced fractures are also clubbed with uh, the drilling induced one into this very class. If you look at this very, uh, this very uh, screen over here, uh, if this is my well trajectory, I am crossing these fractures, you know, which are naturally occurring, tectonic fractures or natural fractures. Whereas in this case, there was a well drilled, it was stimulated with hydrofrac. So these are stimulated fractures in here. And if I put another well here through the stimulated rock volume, what I get to see is the fractures which are stimulation induced. Just to give uh, an account of uh, what do I mean by anthropogenic fractures. Now, we may have uh, the manifestation of fractures on core. Uh, geologists love core. We may have manifestation of them in the core if they are tiny or if they do not have enough damage associated with them. Because if you look at this fracture in here, it's a, it's a very thin aperture open fracture. Uh, this is a tiny little fracture you may or may not even see at, at your screen. I, I cannot comment on that, but I have tried to show them with blue arrows. It's a heel fracture. It's a vein. Uh, so if this fracture is very small, it can you know, appear on core. However, if the interval is fractured intensely, you might not even recover a core. So in those cases, the only thing that come to your rescue are borehole images that you may have acquired while drilling or post drilling uh, and they appear something like this. This example is a stimulated rock volume and these fractures are not natural. These are induced fractures and uh, if you orientate them like in, into a slide you see these are the sinusoidal appearance of these fractures and if you run a borehole image they appear like this. I will come to borehole images later but I just wanted to let you know that there are different ways of uh, looking at fractures from the borehole. So going back to the scale, because a scale is very important. Uh, if we if we talk about a scale, you have, uh, you know, if you look at uh, this West African like margin, African plate, you are up there, up there somewhere here on that African plate, and this is South American plate. Now. These plates, when they drifted away, they left a lot of scar marks over here, right? These are fractures as well at a very, very different scale. You know, we, I'm talking about thousands of kilometers. Or if I'm looking at this thin section where I am looking at micron levels, this is a open fracture, which is which has taken the color of the dye that was put through it. And then you have a vein over here, which is here. So we are talking about a variation in a scale which is huge. However, when we talk about drilling, neither this one nor this one is that is something that we can see. What we see is something like this. This is an outcrop example. You have fractures like this. And if you have put a borehole like six inch or eight and a half inch of diameter, uh, this is what we see. And this is what is important to us while drilling. And because if you see here, these are open fractures and you can you could actually lose a lot of mud through them. So, you know, when we are talking about fractures in the scenario where we're drilling, we are already talking about what we can, you know, face. And uh, if you have uh, these fractures where you are losing mud and where you can actually lose your borehole assembly as well, it can get stuck. There are a lot of problems that come up uh, when you are facing these fractures. That's why knowing about them is very, very important. Now, when we are talking about these fractures, the early detection can help. And what do I mean by early detection? Is uh, while drilling, even before drilling. Before drilling, what you do, we can do is you can do some seismic surveys. 
And those surveys are not going to give you the fractures which are below the resolution of uh, seismic or faults that are below the resolution of the seismic. So you have to do something when you are drilling a well to find out the signatures of fracturing. Now, the natural fractures, uh, as I said, may or may not be uh, found on the on the seismic. So you have to be very careful about uh, applying the method which can read them. And early detection, as I said, is very important because it can help with the drilling practices. We talked about, you know, you may lose mud stuck pipe. And if you want to complete the well uh, by journal isolation, you may or may not want to use those, utilize those fractures, uh, depending upon whether the fractures are bringing you oil or fractures are bringing you the water, from the, if they are connecting somewhere to the water table. So it's very important for the completion side as well, as well as the drilling side. However, not much is available in public domain, as I said earlier, on fracture detection while drilling. Why, why do I say that? I say that based on what I see uh, on, uh, for example, on one petrol. Uh, this is a little bit old, but uh, this, these numbers, but uh, even today they have, uh, I, I took these numbers on October, in October, but they are the same. If you type in fracture in keywords on one petrol, you will see a number, a big number, right? Or more, more than 17,000 return. Like you can have these many papers. If you put fracture in title, still almost 16,000 uh, returns. And if you put fracture in title in the last five years, a good number, like around 4,000 papers have been published in the last five years where fracture is in the title. I'm talking about one petrol. But you, the moment you put fracture and drilling in keywords, it's not even 500. And fracture and drilling in title, we are talking about 300 papers. So you see, fractures are very important, not only for drilling, but also for uh, completion optimization. However, if you look for published literature that if we can know more about fractures while drilling, it's a very low number of entries that you get in from one petrol, meaning that not a lot is available in public domain. And that is the reason you know, I decided to put a talk on characterization of fractures while drilling. Now, there are a lot of technologies available to detect and characterize the fracture. If you look at this axis, X and Y, on the X axis, I have put cost of deployment. On the Y axis is detection capabilities. MWD is measurement while drilling. So when you are trying to you know, do some measurement while you are drilling, it's low cost, but detection capability is low as well. If you start putting some basic logs, well logs, or surface log that I call like mud log, uh, the detection capability increases, cost of deployment increases slightly as well. And if you talk about the borehole image, which is advanced LWD, the cost of deployment is on the higher side, detection capability is best. And uh, in fact, now it goes from detection to characterization. Detection is when you can say if there is a fracture. Characterization is when you can talk about the properties of those fractures, when you can talk about if they are open, they are closed, what is their orientation, etc. Now, these days, people have been trying to deploy machine learning to you know, sort of straighten this curve in this direction, where with the lesser cost, you still have better detection and characterization. Uh, core is very good, but we, if you can retrieve the core through the fracture chain. So what we understand here is detection capability increases with technology deployment, but it also adds to the cost. So we have to see what we can afford, what we want, and how do we want to use, use the technology. And if, if we can use uh, you know, machine learning to lessen the cost. So let's start from very basic thing. Can we detect fractures from very basic measurement? Like if I am looking at the rate of penetration, the ROP, if I am looking at uh, the rotary torque while I'm drilling, can these things give me some indication about fracture? The answer is yes. A lot of people have tried to correlate the fracture with uh, the drilling parameters. So some of them have, like this example is coming from North America land, where based on the drilling parameters, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, shear modulus, brittleness, et cetera, were computed. And from them, it, uh, the fracture index was computed. And this fracture index more or less correspond to the 
presence of natural fractures. Uh, there is another example coming from Bakken uh, shale in US where, uh, you know, based on uh, the vibration data, based on the drilling data, uh, this, this black one, if you see, is uh, the fracture index was uh, put out. And uh, the red one is the fracture example coming from image locked uh, borehole images that I earlier talked about, and I will talk about later as well. Uh, and they made a comparison. And what they saw was, you know, in some of the intervals, there is a very good correspondence. However, some, in some other interval, you know, it doesn't match with the presence of fracture. So it's a very inexpensive rough start to fracture identification, not just with the drilling data. Uh, so we move ahead and we see what else people have done. People have done in this direction. And then uh, this study comes from uh, one, one copper mine where they, in Canada, where they actually compared the fracture on image logs versus the fractures that they estimated with uh, drilling rate, that is ROP and rotary torque. If you carefully look at this example, you know, the rate of penetration, the ROP, if you see here, against these fracture zone that was uh, picked from the image log, you know, it drops. So if you have large fractures, your rate of, your ROP in here increases because it, it, it finds less resistance. And in here, when uh, you do not have fracture, the ROP falls. The ROP picks up where the fractures are. So they, these are open fracture example. In the same paper, they talked about uh, rotary torque. And if you see what happens to the rotary torque in the presence of these fractures, it drops. So rate of penetration may increase, rotary torque may drop. So you get an indication during those intervals that maybe I have fracture. But these are, again, very, uh, I should say, very basic way of understanding if there could be fractures or not. You know nothing more about it, but you can put a, uh, I should say, uh, informed or wise guess that, okay, maybe I have fractures over here. And by the way, these fractures have to be open to impact the rotary torque or uh, the rate of penetration. If you want to understand about the closed fractures, these may not be a good way. But I'm talking about, uh, you know, how the technology evolution can take you uh, forward, starting from the very basic data, coming to, uh, you know, some surface measurements, like if you have flow meter installed, like, and uh, what you can see is, in this case, this is coming from uh, Upper Rhine in Germany from a geothermal well, and uh, you, you see here, there are losses detected over here, losses coming here. And if you look at a borehole image, with which uh, I'm talking a lot about, I will show you uh, more. Uh, then you see there is a fracture over here. In, in fact, two fractures have been picked. So through this uh, fracture zone, you are losing mud. So if you do not have this, but if you have the, the flow meters that can detect the losses, you know that you, know, you are, you are uh, losing some mud into fractures, which are obviously open. We move one step forward and we move into the advanced mud logging domain. Now, when you move into advanced mud logging domain, you can actually uh, start to see uh, if fractures are open or closed based upon some proxies that uh, you may develop in your particular field. For example, this, uh, this uh, case study comes from Anadarko Basin, where from the, from the mud logging, advanced mud logging, uh, they are doing some studies on inorganics and uh, some strontium, zircon, hydrogen, helium, etc., are detected, these inorganics. And in this case, if you look here carefully, these curves, these uh, purple ones, they are actually uh, coming from uh, borehole images and uh, they are open fractures. And these ones, greenish ones, you know, they are the occurrence of uh, closed fractures coming from you know, borehole image, which is a good way of uh, validating the fractured presence. If you look here, the sulfur or the zirconium, they are increasing in the open fracture. And they are, and if you are looking at the closed fracture, there is more of <laughs> correlation with strontium. Why? Because probably while the hydrothermal fluid was circulating through those fractures, it precipitated uh, and uh, it closed the fractures with uh, where the strontium concentration is high. And uh, in the case of 
the zirconium, we see that it corresponds more with the open fracture. Now, these are very uh, basic measurements from the logging point of view, but it's part of advanced model logging where you can develop these proxies. And you can sort of talk about if my fractures are open or closed. Still, you cannot talk about the uh, orientation of those fractures or any other attributes. And by the way, if you see uh, these proxies in some other field, they may or may not necessarily uh, work in your field. So it's like if you have some idea about your field, you're, you can still, at some low cost, you can deploy these and try to find out if the fractures are open or they could be closed. A similar case is with hydrogen and helium. Uh, you know, in this case, the peak of hydrogen here or helium here, they are corresponding to the fractures. Uh, so there are ways to uh, to look at it from the mud logging, mud logging side. So if I come to very basic uh, LWD, that is logging while drilling, basic log, in this cartoon, you see this axis is caliper increasing this way, density increasing this way, and slowness, like acoustic uh, uh, slowness of the formation increasing this way. So if I have a formation which is here in this, in this plot, what happens when the fracture kicks in? When the fracture kicks in and it's big enough, the calipers will enlarge a little bit if you can read them. The acoustic slowness will increase as well and the density will drop because you are not going to make a very good contact. Density is a contact measurement. Uh, so you, the density may drop. And that is what I have shown here in presence of fractures. The caliper may show some enlargement, the density may decrease, and the compressional velocity, uh, if, I, if I'm talking about, uh, so, sorry, the compressional slowness, the DT, that will uh, increase as well. So this is again to find a fracture from the very basic log if it has that big an impact. And I would like to re-emphasize that these fractures in here are very, uh, uh, big ones, that's why, that's why they are able to impact uh, all these basic measurements. Now, if I come to the borehole images I have been talking about quite a lot. So for those of us who have not worked with borehole images, uh, they are 2D representation of a cylindrical measurement. If you drill a borehole, and you apply a physics so that you know you can scan the borehole wall. It could be resistivity, ultrasonic. There are different ways of scanning the borehole wall. You can see those features. In a vertical well, if this is your bedding plane in here, and this is vertical fracture, then if you unroll it, you end up getting a 2D representation where these features running like this are your fractures. So in this example, if you see here, this is electrical image, like resistivity imaging. These are your beddings, and this is your natural fracture. If you have an ultrasonic amplitude image, for the same interval, this is an open fracture. And if you see carefully here, you can see a little, uh, you know, faint features like this. These are actually drilling-induced fractures. They're coming in an echelon in here. So now, when we are talking about borehole images, you can see different type of fractures you can classify. And you can also read their orientation because you can unfold and uh, you can put an orientation. So you can classify, you can talk about the orientation. So now we have moved from detection to characterization. And earlier, the LWD image, uh, earlier the best of the images were available only or wire line. That is after drilling, you have to pull, uh, put your tool down hole and uh, to scan the borehole wall and come up with uh, the measurement here, if you see, this is a wall line imager, and this is an LWD imager. And today, LWD imaging have that capability that it can pick the fractures as good, or in some cases, better than what uh, wall line imagers used to pick. Like in here, this is what uh, deviated or horizontal well. These are fractures, these uh, black marks, and this is the boundary uh, of the bedding, like facies boundary. Uh, if you if you try to visualize it, if you are putting a borehole like this, you have bedding which is almost uh, almost horizontal or low, low angle, and this is coming here in this example. And these are the almost vertical fractures that you see. These are those fractures. 
Now, I have some examples from Algeria, where uh, you guys are located, coming from Southeast Algeria in a gas and condensate reservoir in Ordovician clastics, very old, tight ones. And if you see here, these black uh, traces that I have tried to show with the blue arrows, these ones running like this, like these guys, these are fractures. And this is acquired on LWD uh, logging while drilling, borehole imager. And uh, these longer sinusoids that I have shown with red, they are the bed boundaries. And uh, this is the data that is acquired by the drilling uh, by the drilling BHA in the in the memory. But if you want to look at how it will appear in real time, this example is again coming from Algeria, where you can see these features, they are bedding, and then these features, almost uh, vertical, they are fractures. So you can see them while you are drilling itself. So now you are better informed, you can look at the dips, you can characterize them, and you can also try to make a informed guess on whether they are open or, or not and what to expect going forward. So uh, this is another example where you can actually, where while you are drilling, you can see these fractures in here, these vertical fractures in a, in a, in a horizontal well. So other than borehole images, there are other measurements like uh, some people can start reading it on resistivity itself. Uh, mostly for induced fractures. Some people can start uh, using uh, NMR, Sonic. Uh, so we can put all these things together. And when, I, when I'm talking about these measurements, obviously you are adding cost, but your detection and characterization capability increases. In this case, if you see this example, is from, coming from, a, from Middle East, carbonate, where you see all these fractures. These, these black lines, they're vertical fractures and then their aperture is being computed here. Now, we are not only identifying fractures, we are talking about their properties, which is, that is what I call characterization. And uh, a big, the bigger apertures are noticed here against this fracture over here, again this. So if you are going to utilize these fractures for production, probably you are going to have uh, a lot of uh, hydrocarbon or water, depending upon where these fractures connect to, coming in. And this is another example where the intensity of fracture has been uh, picked up, how many fractures are here. If you see in the bottom part, you have more fractures compared to the uh, top part over here. But now, as I said earlier, detection to characterization, classification, everything uh, is uh, can be done. And uh, these are some examples where these fractures can be seen on, uh, on Sonic. Uh, these are Chevron patterns on tonally waveform. Uh, for those of us who are not really working with this data, what I want to show you is if you see upgoing and downgoing uh, waves converging over here, that's where you see these fractures. And this is what you see on the image. So there are different ways while we are drilling with the help of power hole images, sonic, et cetera, you can see those fractures. And then if you want to look away from the fractures, uh, away from the bore hole, uh, there are deep azimuthal reading measurements that can help you understand the existence of fractures. Like if you see here in the seismic, definitely there are faults over here. And uh, when you do a deep reading resistivity mapping while you are drilling, you can see this uh, in here and you can actually interpret those faults, which are like big, big, big fractures. And the technology has gone to a Gone to those distances where you can not only look above and below, but uh, on both sides to see if uh, the fractures that you are intersecting, uh, how they are behaving away from the well bore. Uh, this is a big uh, improvement, uh, you know, say technological advance, the advancement uh, that can talk about uh, fractures while drilling away from the borehole as well. This is another example where you can see that uh, two laterals were placed. And uh, with the help of uh, reservoir mapping, deep reading resistivity, you know, these uh, curtain sections have been made. Red is high resistivity, blue is low resistivity. And if you see, there are fractures, these uh, corridors, and uh, the water is actually breaking through. That's why you see water will bring, is bringing down the resistivity. So you can see, you know, when you are inject doing injection and you are not getting the proper augmentation of pressure in the, in the production well, 
uh, probably you want to utilize these technologies to understand uh, where my water is going that I'm injecting. So it's probably getting into some fracture corridor and uh, not reaching where it should. So these are different uh, applications and all of these measurements, as I told you, uh, are available while drilling. So it depends uh, on what is your objective and what you want to achieve, starting from very basic measurements to some mud logging, to some basic logs, to advanced uh, measurements. So this uh, also brings to the discussion the limitation and opportunities associated. So as I said, the basic data lacks quantification and orientation, but it can definitely tell you about the presence to some extent. Advanced measurements can reduce the, the, the cost when we apply machine learning. How? I will show you some examples. And uh, the interpretation can actually be done downhole while you're drilling and sent uphole in real time. These are the recent advances that have uh, come up. This example from Ordo Basin in China shows that uh, some basic well logs were run like uh, caliper, acoustic, neutron, density, resistivity, and core was taken from the well bore. So what they did is they applied uh, some machine learning on the training data where they had fractures in the core. There are different methods uh, like uh, support vector machine, Laplacian support vector machine, and uh, they use those technologies and they try to predict uh, in the interval where they still had the code, so 80% of the data was put for training and 20% for validation, and they got good validation in, uh, in some cases. So what does it mean? Can you apply this, this learning, and, and you, if you do not have code, can you still predict the presence of fractures with these logs? In this case, yes, but these, uh, these learnings you know, are very limited in terms of the, the data that you provide. So for a machine learning algorithm to work best, we all know that it has to be trained properly and that requires a lot of data. However, in particular field where you are working, you may have access to that data, you may develop a local model and you can get uh, good enough training. For example, uh, this, is an, uh, this one is coming again from North America land where the prediction was so good in a lateral that if you look at the true data that is coming from borehole images, the blue one, which is hiding under the orange one, which is prediction. So in this case, the machine learning model was robust and it actually predicted pretty well uh, the, the presence of fractures where uh, the borehole images have picked it up. So mind it, when we are using machine learning like this, it is telling you about the presence of fractures, but quantification or characterization may not yet be possible. But people have been trying to learn from the advanced data that they have acquired, and they can. They are trying to. If you remember, I showed you a uh, curve. They are trying to see if uh, more and more machine learning on the on the wells where we have core or image logs, if we can utilize that and make local models at least. And then we go and acquire only basic data and try to predict with the help of uh, those machine learning models if we can get uh, similar information. Now, our industry in oil, in oil and gas, and for that matter, energy industry, has learned a lot of things from medicine, medical industry, uh, like NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, some of your friends or relatives who have gone for MRI, magnetic resonance imaging for some, some thing or the other, that is actually what we deploy downhole, we call it uh, NMR logging. Similarly, in fracture detection, again, medical science is uh, going ahead and we need to learn a few things. Like if you, if you look here, they're talking about fractures in our hand, you know, or in leg, you know, the medical, the injury, if you see this fracture, right? So based on a lot of x-rays or data that they have, they, they did some learning and they are able to uh, you know, label it straight away. So it is getting independent of uh, the person who is reviewing it. You know, you can have a very good model and you can straight away detect and say that, okay, I can read fracture here, here, and here, like in here, if you see carefully. These are labeled by, by machine learning and similar things are being attempted on borehole images so that uh, you know we can <laughs> predict and uh, we can do all the interpretation very quickly. 
And uh, now some of these fractures that are getting picked down uh, by the tool, they can be processed and they can also be sent up whole in real time. So a lot of work happening in this direction. If in this example, if you see, we have uh, these blue ones, they are drilling induced fractures. They, they can be picked up by machine learning models down hole as you are drilling. And then with the telemetry, in most cases we have mud pulse telemetry, they can be sent up hole. And which is a very uh, big advancement. And uh, now the industry is trying to work on interpreting the fracture scene down hole and picking and streaming it up hole in real time rather than the images which require a lot of uh, bandwidth. So what I wanted to tell, suggest with this talk is, uh, you know, this type of deep learning system when embedded into drilling BHA can be very helpful in detecting and characterizing the fractures as you are drilling. So this brings me to the end of the talk where I want to, detection of fracture is very helpful not only with mitigation, but uh, preventive measure for efficient well operations. Uh, and actionable intelligence is made available by fracture characterization while drilling. You can decide whether you want to uh, you know, back rim or not. If they are fractures, probably not, because you will end up uh, uh, you know, deteriorating your borehole uh, uh, condition further. And if you want to complete the well, you, you want to know the presence of practice as early as you can so that you do not uh, spend much of rig time. Uh, and then, uh, as I told you that uh, some of the machine learning advances, they are trying to characterize the fractures uh, in a way that uh, you do not really need to run all the advanced technologies going forward. And with very basic uh, measurements, you still can try to meet your objectives related to fractures. So that's all I had to talk about in this uh, presentation. Shukran, your feedback is important and uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the uh, fruitful and insightful session. We will, uh, for now, we will proceed, we will proceed uh, with the questions. Everyone, you can leave, everyone, you can, Leave your questions here in the meeting chat box, and Mr. Shamdamani will proceed to answer them. Thank you, everyone. So, in the in the chat box, I see a question uh, that is related to how we can identify the nature of fractures, closed or open, partial open, etc., through borehole imaging logs. So the borehole imaging logs, uh, you can apply different measurement, like if you apply resistivity and ultrasonic together. Uh, in open fracture, you will lose some resistivity. If you're working in water-based mud, the amplitude will get lost. Uh, if, let me go to uh, some uh, previous example that I put uh, in here. If you see, this is electrical image in water-based mud. So what is happening here is uh, water-based mud has entered into the fracture. So co compared to the matrix, it's low in resistivity. So the black is low resistivity and bright is high resistivity. So that's where it drop the resistivity because water-based mud is conductive. It's less resistive than the formation. So it it is open for sure. And same thing, the same fracture, when you're looking at acoustic amplitude, what happens is in the open fracture, the amplitude of the ultrasonic drops down. So here, black is low amplitude, bright is high amplitude. So this is an open fracture. If it was a closed fracture, if it was a healed fracture, uh, what would have happened if it is healed with the conductive material like clay, the amplitude will still fall down compared to the matrix. And the travel time, there is another uh, uh, measurement of uh, ultrasonic travel time. The travel time will you know, not get impacted because if it is filled, it is not entering into the fracture aperture. So the travel time does not get impacted. However, if the fracture is open, the travel time through that increases. So there are different measurements of uh, borehole imaging. 
electrical, like resistivity based and ultrasonic, if you put them together, it's very easy to identify if the fractures are open or closed. And if they are partially open or not, uh, that depends upon the morphology. In here, it looks pretty smooth. So I would say it's, uh, it's, it's pretty open. But if sometimes, uh, if a few things are precipitated through it, uh, then you can you can call it partially. This is the interpretation then uh, that comes into the picture. So uh, I have uh, another question is, uh, uh, if uh, all of these technologies can be used to uh, predict the fracture's dimension in real time, uh, yes, we, the industry is uh, trying to, you know, acquire as much as information in real time itself. And uh, if you have really immense fractures, I said, you can even start to see mud losses that you will uh, read in through the flow meter. And when your uh, drilling BHA passes through those, that fracture, uh, images should be able to picture, uh, to, to pick that. But if you're talking about uh, something that is ahead of the bit, which I have not drilled yet, and still I want to know if there is fracture or not. So that is where far field imaging comes into the picture. Far field imaging can be done with uh, with uh, uh, acoustic and with resistivity. Acoustic, uh, there are technologies on wireline that is post drilling that gives you a very good understanding of uh, you know the area around the borehole where you can actually talk about uh, some uh, presence of fracture. That is not available while drilling as of now on LWD, like while. But however, resistivity imaging away from the borehole is available. And uh, in one of those examples, I showed you where there was water cut through those laterals. Uh, so this is the volumetric information that uh, you are getting of, out of uh, measurements uh, during drilling. Uh, ahead of the bit, uh, not yet, but uh, industry is working on that as well. So you should be available. <laughs> You should be the technology should be available where you can actually uh, uh, show some examples. In Algeria, uh, I have done a lot of uh, like Hamra project. I have a lot on uh, you know on that. I have maybe more than twenty wells uh, that I have seen the images of, and you have a very good ultrasonic imaging images there that shows a lot of fractures there. One of the examples I showed from Elizi province in the southeast, where uh, I showed uh, the examples of uh, open fractures. A lot of them were there. Uh, let, me, let me go back. These ones, these ones, all right? So these are coming again, uh, ordovician plastics, very tight reservoir in southeast of Algeria. And you have fractures in real time, you can see that. When as you are drilling, this image is acquired and being sent up hole. So you can see these very faint events. You know, if you can see these uh, vertical events here, 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 like here, they are fractures. So you can see them as you drill ahead of the ahead or away. There are uh, you know technologies for that as well. Some are established, some we are still like the industry is still working on. So for fractures, of course, uh, Algeria has a lot to offer. This was uh, this example is coming from a paper published uh, uh, with with uh, guys. Another question is uh, coming from: uh, Can we rely on injecting a fluid tracer, for example, into drilling fluid, uh, which can be detected and traced as it moves through fracture in the subsurface? If yes, what is the accuracy level approximately. So depends upon the opening of fracture. If the fractures are big enough and you have enough pressure uh, uh, at the time of drilling that the injection fluid will actually pass through without fracking the formation, it can be, it can be picked up if, we ha if it gives enough resistivity contrast. So these type of studies, when they happen, we do a you know a pilot study in the lab first, looking at the properties, and then you can deploy in the field within those uh, constraints uh, that have been uh, ascertained. So yes, it is possible. And in fact, here in North America, uh, people have 
I'm not talking about injected, but when you, they have uh, made hydrofrax, how and based on the model, they say that this is my stimulated rock volume. To this extent, the fracture will go. They drill a well, and uh, you know they can see those, those fractures, and they they can, or if they do not see, they know that probably this is out of the stimulated rock volume. So yes, we can do whatever you are talking about uh, fluid tracer. Depends upon uh, the the contrast that it can bring. So any such study needs to be uh, done in the lab first in terms of the properties to come up to finalize that uh, injection fluid properties and then it can be attempted. This is a very good idea. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Please? So there are ways. We have to, another question from Mr. Yeah, from from Abdul Kader. I say there is another question about uh, both natural and induced fracture. So yes, natural and induced fractures. They, uh, if dr there are drilling induced fracture, they can be identified from the natural fractures by two means because most of the drilling induced fractures are very sharp, and they have a relationship with the prevalent stress field, right? So if you see them in that particular direction, uh, for example, where are these drilling induced fractures usually manifested? They are in the direction of the maximum horizontal stress. So, if, so you know that they could be drilling induced or based on their shape, their sharpness, there are ways to interpret them from the natural fracture. And uh, in fact, if you have induced big fractures, you can also find them in propagation resistivity, LWD resistivities, uh, you know, array resistivities, where we are looking at uh, shallow, medium, deep, very deep, and you can see the response of resistivity against those fractures. So yes, there are ways to identify the natural fractures from induced fractures while drilling using these measurements that I just talked about. So, uh, thank you, sir. I think we don't have any more questions. Yes, I think not. Uh, sir, SP University of the student doctor was honored to host you. I hope we get uh, to host you again in the near future. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Abdul Abdul thing is going to ask you again. Thank you. Uh, it would be an honor uh, to to meet in person. In fact, uh, I can I you know I work for this company SLB from Bajay earlier, and uh, we do have our operations there. So if I am there, I would definitely try to get in touch and uh, visit the university as well. Thank you. Uh, please wait. Who uh, is it? Uh, asking you another question. Could you please uh, proceed to answer? What is the most promising new technology now? Okay, if you're talking about uh, new technology while drilling, uh, there are different, uh, the industry is looking at uh, uh, two things, resistivity imaging away from the borehole, because at the borehole, we have borehole images which are working perfect. Uh, they, they give you all the information along the borehole wall where for the fractures, their orientation, their attributes, like resistivity, ultrasonic, they're the most often used. Deep resistivity imaging is, uh, is very good and work in progress because now industry is also looking to see beyond and ahead of the bit in all the direction. Another thing that uh, people are working on is uh, acoustic far field imaging. Acoustic far field imaging is uh, well established in wireline domain. Uh, in the drilling domain, it's uh, it's a work in progress, should I say. So these are the new technologies uh, in terms of uh, detecting the fractures, uh, and they 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 are very uh, handy, should I say? They are promising results, and uh, I believe uh, you know more and more work uh, should be available. Uh, in public domain, as I said, the entire idea why I started this talk is I found very little uh, in SPE where people are talking about. Uh, so, 
<laughs> yes, there are new technologies uh, work in progress, and there are a couple of more. Uh, I cannot elaborate more because uh, they have they are in nascent stage, but uh, industry recognizes that uh, you know the earlier you get to know, detect, characterize the fractures, the better it is where they impact uh, the production. And mind it, fractures are you know it's it's very peculiar because in oil and gas you you may want them or you may not want them depending upon if they're connecting to the oil and to the water table or you know only to your uh, reservoir in geothermal you want open fractures right to to transmit the heat uh, the so you're looking for those fractures in geothermal in carbon capture you do not want any of these fractures because you want to put, put the CO2, you want to sequester there, and you do not want it to leak. So fractures are important in the new energy portfolio as well. Carbon sequestration, you do not want to see these. Geothermal, you want to see plenty of these. Oil and gas, you want to see them and do not want to see them, depending upon you know uh, where where they go. So they are very <laughs> peculiar and uh, you know very uh, unique features. Yeah, and their their presence is across uh, all the. Uh, new energy portfolio as well. I showed you also an example of hydrogen and helium where they were getting picked against the fracture. So if you are looking for helium exploration for that matter, uh, you have to chase those fractures to find the helium. So it's interesting. You you can love fractures, you can hate fractures, you cannot ignore them because they are there in conventional, unconventional, new energy everywhere. So there are technologies, uh, more and more work is uh, and going on in both uh, industry and academia to know more about them. Thank you, sir, for your answer. Any more questions? It's it's uh you the time you are spending with me and fractures. This is not good. <laughs> oh, I sort of enjoyed every minute of this session. Good. Thank, thank. So uh, if we are done, we can uh, just uh, leave. I can oh, thank you again for your. Thank you again, sir. SP University of Mugasun chapter is thanking you for this uh, valuable uh, session. the session and hope to have you at our faculty in the near term. Thank you again. Have fun. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you. <laughs>